Hello, I am Donnie, and I am the cute one. And I am Chelsea, and I am the cute one. T-G-I-F. Remember that song? I do. I do remember that song. Wow. Thank you. I thought I'd shake it up a bit. I love when you say thank you, and I don't compliment you. I just said, yeah, I do. I do remember that song, and you said thank you. Well, that's because I'm so used to you knowing nothing that it does feel like I should thank you when you know stuff. Oh, like I've given you a gift just by me being like aware of something that's relevant. Not that that's necessary. (laughs) relevant it was when we were in like elementary school but you gotta take what you can get exactly so again thank you please help us out on youtube so go to our youtube the links in the show notes and you can like and subscribe watch a video if you want but if you don't have time for that just like a couple and subscribe trying to get paid here still don't have enough money for health insurance but one of the cuties overseas and this might be illegal so whatever. One of the cuties overseas said they would send me steroids that they get with their health insurance. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. Well, it (laughs) might be illegal, but also thank you cuties for keeping my co-host alive. And this is just indicative of our broken healthcare system. So if they don't want illegal steroids being (laughs) shipped in from overseas, do better. (laughs) I am sorry that I'm a bit late to this recording today, Donnie. My daughter did make me we pulled into the parking lot and she did make me play Fergalicious to completion before she allowed me to get her out of her car seat and walk her into the building so I am (laughs) about oh I don't know two minutes and 57 seconds late because that is the length of the song that we listen if you're gonna be late that's the only reason really she is so excited to see you this weekend I'm excited to see her. It's her birthday. And I know you told me to keep it cheap, but I just can't. I just can't. So I did Uh, go rogue. Rogue in a way (laughs) that's going to make her happy and me happy or rogue in a way that I'm going to be cursing you silently. Play-Doh and a drum set. A drum set? (laughs) No, just kidding. I was going to say, well, spoiler alert, she already has one of those because I'm a masochist. But No, I was trying to think of the things parents hate the most. But you hate yourself, I guess. I know. Nobody hates me more than me. (laughs) Now, before we even, since we're talking about this weekend anyway, before we get into the headlines, we will be in D.C. together while the cuties are listening to this on Friday. So we're going to the Beyond the Blinds live show. So cuties, if you listen to this in the morning and you're in the D.C. area, tickets are still on sale, I think. So come meet us and Troy and Kelly from Beyond the Blind. Yeah, come to the Beyond the Blind show to see us. Yeah, if you pay us $10 on the Patreon, we'll do a meet and greet at the Beyond the Blind (laughs) live show. We'll meet you at the bar. Donnie will be ordering an Almeretta Sour. You know I will. With that said, though, I am pissed off. Oh. At who? At me? At DC. Oh. The first time I stayed overnight in D.C. was like two years ago. Quinn had a live show there. I went there. Our hotel was two blocks from Awawa. So I just thought, oh, this is the D.C. life. It's why I wanted to move there. Like I envisioned every morning I can wake up, take a walk to Wawa, get my bacon, egg and cheese on a croissant and a coffee, come back to my home, eat it and do some work. Then a past summer, I stayed at Mandy Slutsker's house and I said, where's the closest Wawa? She said, there aren't any in DC. I said, you're a goddamn liar. I know there's one. I've been to one. So then I looked and it's the only one in DC and our hotel is not near it. Well, so actually I am mad at you because I let you pick where we stay for the hotel <laughs> and, you, and you didn't tell me to pick one near Iwawa. Well, pardon me. I wasn't aware of the parameters of needing the proximity to Iwawa to be so close. <laughs> I did wonder why you wanted to move to DC. God bless anyone who lives in D.C., but why? You don't like it? My house is right between D.C. and Mm. Baltimore, and if I had to pick, why be less when you can be more? I don't know what that means. Oh, Baltimore. I Mm -hmm. see. The only reasons I would want to live in Baltimore is so I could act out hairspray. That's a good reason, I think. (laughs) I would have maybe liked to hear, you know, I'd only be 20 minutes from you. We could see each other all the time. (laughs) Is there a Wawa near your house? I'm sure. I'll do some Googling. Thank you. Stop recording. Well, I'm glad that you're not mad at me or Kelly or Troy. No, I said I am mad at you. Well, I'm I just choosing it. to ignore that. <laughs> I'm going to politely say. Also, no. I am scared. I was better for a week and now the cough is back. I didn't believe that you were better. You kept saying you were better, but I would like to remind you, I do edit these shows. Hate it. Okay. Well, we can move on, Yeah, I, guess. I don't think we need another episode diving deep into my genuine worry that you're very But Ill. I will say, I'm still not healed. I still need health insurance. So if you haven't yet, please 
subscribe to the Patreon and help me live. <laughs> For just $5 a month, you can keep this man alive because he is teetering on the brink. Truly am. Okay. So this week brought us, along with Donnie continuing his steady plummet to death, death. this Halfway. week brought us Tony nominations, Britney Spears back in court with her dad, Dave and Buster's adding gambling to their menu, a bizarre Drew Barrymore interview with Kamala Harris. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mamala Harris. <laughs> Sick. Real Housewives of New Jersey taglines and Barbara Streisand forgetting how Instagram works. And somehow we've made it to Friday yet again. Are you on a Zempic? <laughs> <laughs> what? I meant it as a compliment. I forgot people can read it. As far as the Tony nominations go, I have decided I'm going to go rogue. Not right now. But I already talked about to my subscribers on Instagram my thoughts on the nominees. I loved the back to back stories of you being like should I give my thoughts on the Tonys and then the next one being like oh wait I forgot I do work for Broadway so I probably shouldn't and then the next one being like but for 99 cents I'll spill it all and I'm like I love that you can be bought and your price point is 99 cents <laughs> so Quinn asked me that yesterday because I was not eligible to have subscriptions for a long time they just gave me permission this week I was like I don't know what to talk about and then it just so happened fate dropped the Tony nominees in my lap and I wasn't gonna make it subscription based at first but the first thing I wanted to say was to talk shit about the show I'm currently working at so I was like maybe not do that that would be a perfect thing for subscriptions but then I was telling Quinn how many subscribers I was getting I was keeping him up to date now we're at nine now we're at Only 12. 200 more and I'll be able to go to the doctors <laughs> maybe but I was telling him the things that I would be willing to talk about on my subscriptions. And he was like, you truly have no shame. You would talk about your family drama behind a paywall. And I said, well, with a subscription, it's tough. Like, I do feel weird saying, like, I'll tell you about my dad's surgery for 99 cents per person. Because what if I only get 10? Then for 10 bucks, I'm telling family tea. Mm. But I will say... If any casting director is listening, for a salary, there is nothing I won't talk about. If you put me on a reality show and give me a stipend, I will tell you everything that ever happened to me in my life. You heard it here first. And I'm once again asking, why the fuck haven't you been cast on Big Brother yet? I don't know. I'm growing impatient. I'm growing annoyed because you know my power of manifestation. You know that I am a little bit witchy and I can sometimes predict the future. I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But now it's just annoying because it's like... Well, when? when? Because I'll be pissed if by the time I get it, it's like, Donnie breaks history, the oldest contestant to ever be on. Donnie breaks history again, the oldest contestant to show his butthole <laughs> on national television. Donnie breaks history again, the only contestant to die <laughs> on screen. Anyway, let's get into the headlines. Sure. This isn't really a headline okay. so much as... Great. <laughs> Mine's not a headline so much as I saw Challengers on Saturday, and I loved it. If you couldn't tell by anything I've been posting. Yeah, it is your entire personality now, which I do appreciate because I feel like I learn about things through osmosis because mm. of our... Did you hear that? No. There's like a high-pitched buzzing in my house. <laughs> oh, if that's the refrigerator down here, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Okay, Why? it stopped. I don't know if I'm like a dog where I can hear frequencies. Like, can you ever hear a light? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you can hear electricity sometimes. Yes. Whenever that happens to me, it's like the most dysregulating thing. I'm going to go full ski boots in a minute if it mm. starts up again. So, anywho, it did Quinn stop. said I had hearing like a rat this week because I was cooking rice in the kitchen and we were in the living room and I could hear it like, you know how sometimes rice boils and the water comes over? Uh-huh. I could hear that happening, but we had the TV on, we were talking, and I just did this, and then I ran to the other room to stop it from happening. He said, what's happening? And I said, the rice is boiling over. He said, you heard that? I said, yes. And that's when he told me I had hearing like a rat. I didn't know rats had good hearing, but I think that I have hearing like a rat too. Mm. I can hear everything, but maybe it's because my sight is so bad that my other senses have to overcompensate oh my smells bad so maybe mm. that's why i'm good at hearing wow we should have a hearing competition <laughs> okay great okay back to challengers mm -hmm. i do feel like i learn things from you through osmosis and like if you care about something then i'm forced to care about it 
I had no idea what Challengers was about. Somehow, like I saw the press tour and all of that, but I got kind of confused with Dune. Is that their other movie they mm. did together? And so then I was like... It, well, no. they didn't do it together. She's in it. With her boyfriend? No. He's only in Spider-Man. Oh. And he's not in this. Huh. Well, see. One thing I have to tell you. 55% of people that saw the movie and were surveyed after it said they only saw it for Zendaya, not the plot. And I think I'm one of what them. What is it? Tennis? Yes. So I do like a good tennis movie, not Wimbledon. I've been telling people I loved Wimbledon this whole press tour. I was like, I'm so excited to see this. I loved Wimbledon. I fucking hate Wimbledon, the movie. So leading up to it, the trailers were very... Have you not even seen a trailer? Mm -mm. I told you the reason why the whole premise of this podcast that I have so many pop culture Mm. blind spots is truly... It is a superpower or a curse. I don't know. But when I don't care about something, I truly can put the blinders on and it doesn't exist. And this is something you don't care about. I knew that we would be talking about it at some point because you (laughs) haven't shut the fuck up about it. So tell me what it's about. What it's about is, and I don't want to spoil it because trailers were very loosey-goosey and didn't really tell you much. But it's about a girl and two boys that are all like equal level when they're in college at playing tennis. She's already getting sponsorships when she's in college and then she breaks her ankle or whatever. So then because of that, she becomes one of their trainers and then they become really big and she's like stuck in this place where she wishes it was her whatever but instead of just like living in that and moving on she marries him instead so she's married to this really successful tennis player but then in the past when they were all in college she was girlfriends with the best friend of that boy so then it's like this love triangle movie There's a scene in the trailer where it looks like the triple kiss. I don't want to tell you if it happens or not, but it was a very hot movie. Mm. And the director is the same person that directed Call Me By Your Name. Okay. Yeah. So I knew it was going to be a horny gay thing. And it was. But the tweet that really made me know I would like it is someone took the cast members of this and then compared them to the cast members of Cruel Intentions. And they were like, it's the same movie if you think about it. I was like, oh, my God. I can't and wait. And then you pulled a Pee Wee Herman, got arrested for a- Thought about it, but I didn't. I just <laughs> waited till I got home. Like anyone with manners. Which just is for Pee Wee Herman for many reasons. But when that man was arrested for yanking it in a movie uh-huh. theater, it was an adult film. Did you know that? I always knew that. But why is that a rule that you can't do that at well, an adult film? I mean, it is towing the line of masturbating in public i don't think that we should be opening well then why i think we should the narrative (laughs) that i was fed was that i don't know it was like toy story 2 he was like no i want to go back to it let's change some laws here if joe biden (laughs) can say that weed can be called something else or whatever then he can let masturbation in public happen because if you're gonna have an adult movie theater with the sole purpose to watch porn on a big screen why can you not do what you would normally do if you watch porn? Well, it's a slippery slope, pun intended. While we're talking about manners, I do want to rant really quick. Mm-hmm. Because I've already seen the movie. You can't spoil it for me. I understand a good meme. But there are so many clips on Twitter and TikTok of people who had taken their phone out and like filmed scenes from the movie just to make memes out of. I'm like, put your goddamn phone away. What is this? I'd rather you take your dick out. (laughs) Are you mad that they weren't having manners or are you mad that they got the meme out before you? No, this is not about that. Was it similar to when Britney and Jax created a Twitter account for little baby Couchy and (laughs) he immediately had more followers than me? I had to reflect. Was I mad that it was a baby Twitter account or was I mad that this baby had more followers than me? And I did come to the conclusion it was both. That's fair. But no, this is solely that they took. Could you imagine being at the movies for a movie you've waited a year and a half for? And this is what you see in front of you. Put that fucking phone down. It would be really annoying. That's why I only go to Alamo Draft House. Sponsor us. They kick you out if you talk more than twice. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to be on your phone. Exquisite. Now, with that said, I recently saw Abigail at Alamo Draft House and I was (laughs) I got in trouble. You did? For what? Yeah. I was so scared. I hid my eyes, but in a way that I did this. 
So my arms were up, <laughs> blocking the people behind me. And the server ran over and was like, can you put your arms down? I said, oh, yeah, I will, I will. You are such a goody <laughs> two-shoes that you started that, I got in trouble, and it was somebody whispering to you, could you please put your arms down? And she didn't say, like, this was your one time. But on the screen before the movie, it says, like, you'll be told one time, and then you're kicked out. So then after that happened, I was like, was that my one time? You had to, like, handcuff your hands. <laughs> I did. I sat on my hands for the rest of the movie. Instead of doing this the next mm -hmm. time you're scared, instead of the – the weird choice to put your hands in the air. May I suggest, this is my go-to horror movie outfit. You wear a hoodie and then mm. you tighten the strings as tight as they'll go so you look like Kenny from South Park. So you only are looking out of like a little peephole. Okay, that's a good idea. And I have never done this before. I don't know where this came from. And we were in the front row. So, so this is what the whole theater could see. I was terrified. Loved it. You wouldn't like it. It's the bloodiest movie of all time, they've said. Oh, no, thank you. But it's so good. Okay, one more thing I want to drop about this movie. I feel like I have no place to say this. Everyone on Twitter is thirsting after the two male leads in Challengers. The one is so ugly. <laughs> Everyone is like, remember, we had him first. He was in Dear Evan Hansen. He was in West Side Story. He was in this. I don't care what he was in besides the fugly tree when he fell and hit every branch. I think this man is tough to look at. And I'm glad I'm able to say it here because I'm afraid to say it on Twitter. To quote George W. Bush, <laughs> fool me once, shame on me. Can't get fooled again. Shame on me. Shame on me because you started that and for whatever reason... I thought that you were going to have a rare moment of introspection. No, of course. It was that he is ugly. And so you don't <laughs> think that people should be thirsting after him because he's on the not. List. Well, I just think it's like the sorority girl effect or fraternity boy. If you would rather talk about men than women, whatever. I would never like to talk about a frat boy. Okay, so we'll do it. But we are going to call some women ugly now. Just I would up. argue more frat boys are ugly than. But I. when you see them all at once, I think you're when I see goes... them all at once, I hold on to my drink tightly <laughs> and promptly leave the room. <laughs> So we'll talk about sorority girls. So okay. If you are looking at a group of young women, your eye goes to the prettiest one, and then you just assume that they're all that pretty. But then when you look at them one by one, you're like, oh my God, she has no teeth. This one is bald-headed with Cynthia hair. Like, you... <laughs> You, you can really focus like that. So I think Zendaya in the middle of a triple kiss on a bed, people are just horned up and excited. But then nobody has done the self-reflection to look at the two boys one by one and notice that you can grab them by their ears and spin them like the Trunchbull in Matilda. Okay. I'm going to show you him really quick. Yeah, because you know, I don't know who the fuck you're talking about. I know Zendaya. You might like him. That's going to make me barf. Oh, I don't think either of those are hot. Oh, thank God. They're like regular person cute, but I wouldn't look at them and be like movie stars next to Zendaya. No. And that's what I mean. The triple kiss is hot. I think that I thought one of them was Tom Holland. You clearly did based on how this whole conversation started, but that is wrong. Well, I also think Tom Holland is not attractive. Hmm. I go back and forth. Let's move on to a hot person who paid for it. I want to talk about the Bella Hadid Vogue What's in My Bag interview that she just did. When I saw this What's in My Bag, it immediately made me think of the letter that Yolanda Foster <laughs> allegedly wrote after Bella's DUI in 2014. Are you familiar? I'm not. Okay, so there was this letter that was leaked around the time of Bella Hadid's DUI that was allegedly from Yolanda. And I do believe it is from her, but I have to say allegedly because she has denied it's hers. But it's a novel. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read a couple of things. Does it start like this? Hello, my love. Hello, my love, my king, my prince. <laughs> Chew two almonds very slowly and then call that dinner. Goodbye. Lemon, slime disease. Believe me. <laughs> Okay. So it says, and I'm not going to do accent work, but you can imagine Yolanda's voice as mm -hmm. I read this. 
Bella, I just got your car back from the pound and I was looking for your purse as I stumbled on the most disastrous car I have ever seen in my entire life. Now I am really in tears and really scared. Who are you? What were you thinking? You have literally turned into a spoiled, unthankful, unthoughtful, careless human being that is lucky to be alive. What an eye-opening experience to find beer cans, pink kitty bottles with vodka, bottles of Adderall, Vivance, rolling papers, and a car full of dirty clothes, dirty Dirty underwear with blood stains, Tampax. I have honestly never seen anything like it. Oh, yeah. And then it just gets sad. So I'm going to just end it there. <laughs> and, you know, people can change and grow. And this was 10 years ago. But I do love the juxtaposition of knowing that she at one point had a car full of pills, bloody tampons, and little <laughs> tiny pink bottles of vodka to now what she's presenting as in her bag to this day. This is like the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. But to be fair, the bag was never the issue. She didn't do what's in my car. It could still look like that to this true. day. True, that is true. Okay, so on to this interview. I'm just so fascinated by this particular brand of celebrity, of these people who are like so clearly everything is a facade, and yet I can't stop watching. So she starts out, she like pulls out this big ass YSL bag, and She's like, my friends call me Mary Poppins because my bag's full of everything. Who do they call her? Mary Poppins. Oh, that's good to know. Because when Mary called in this week to describe don't tell mom the babysitter's dead, she went by a different name and that name was Martha. Did I say Martha Poppins? You did. You know, I knew it didn't <laughs> sound right. And a trip to Google would have told you you were correct about that. Well, we don't know what Mary's short for. <laughs> Maybe her birth name is Martha. You know what? Perhaps. Okay, so Bella Hadid is a real Martha Poppins. <laughs> and some of these things that are in her bag, not surprising. Anyone who saw Yolanda on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, we saw that hall closet. We should not be surprised that her <laughs> daughter has an entire mini bag full of vitamins and essential oils. Uh. Like, the lemon, the tree, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. She also has two sets of glasses. One just, you know, pair of sunnies. Oh. And then she has her invisible glasses where she put on reading glasses and she says, these are the glasses I put on when I'm in public and I want to be invisible. I put them on and they turn me invisible. Did this bitch watch Big Daddy and pretend that she invented this concept? This was also like the second thing she brought out of her bag. And I'm like, oh, she's doing bits. If you were famous, well, if you were famous, you wouldn't want to be invisible. But like, what do you do in public to make yourself feel invisible? Pretend that you got him. The fact that that's your go-to for any occasion. <laughs> so you feel invisible when you chew I gum? feel like I blend in. Like, oh, he's chewing gum. Just pass him by. Don't bother him. Do you think this is your theater training? Like that's your extra My prop work? work? That you're in the back of a scene and it's like, oh, you have to be like doing <laughs> stuff. So people like mime conversations and you're sitting there like chewing gum, like leaning on a rail. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I wonder if I would get in trouble if I was an extra and they just had me cross in the back and they were like, why are you doing that? Why are you pretending to chew gum? Nobody told you to do that. No, I would love to hear the backstory that you've developed for your background character you're like well my background character is actually coming from the dentist he has terrible halitosis he feels very <laughs> self-conscious about it so he always chews gum uh -huh. when I want to feel invisible I do the opposite of what Bella does I take off my glasses now I mostly <laughs> wear contacts but back in the day before my eyes deteriorated to bat like oh I have rat like ears and bat like eyes oh. I used to when I would go to my hometown bar just take my glasses off and then I didn't have to worry about who I ran into because I didn't see but him. Then they can all see you and you're giving yourself a disadvantage. But then they have to approach me. I don't feel obligated like, oh, I made eye contact with this person. It puts the ball in their court. Like, if you really want to talk to me, you can come over. But I'm not going to feel obligated. This is before I went to therapy and worked okay. on people pleasing, okay, okay. et cetera. So now, when you stand in a window, are you ever afraid that you'll get shot by accident? <laughs> What? <laughs> Whenever I stand in front of a window. How did we get here? <laughs> this is important. I need you to take me on the bunny hops from topic to topic. How did we get to when you stand by a window, are you afraid you're going to get shot? I'm always afraid I'm going to get shot. I live in America. but That's true. That's true. No, but like 
without context, if you were standing in a blurry bar and you didn't see anyone, they could do anything to you at all time because you do not see it coming. And I like to be very aware of my surroundings, except when I walk to and from the train, then I'm just on my phone the whole time. I could be hit by three cars, wouldn't even know. With that said, when I am in a window of my apartment or maybe my family's house, whatever, I'm afraid that like, I'm just in here, think I'm safe, having a good time, watching a movie, doing a monologue in front of the window, whatever. And then what if there's a gunfight outside and as they have bad aim, they are like this, fuck all of you and shoot up by accident and it goes through the window. So you don't fear that is what you're telling me. No, but I'm sorry that that is such a daily (laughs) fright for you. You know, just like what I tell my daughters when they see a bug and they're scared and I say, well, you're a huge human to this bug. The bug is just as afraid of you. I want you to think that thought the next time you're in a window that, yes, you're afraid you might get shot. But that gunman is just as afraid of you giving a (laughs) monologue at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, That's sometimes why I moon people. (laughs) (laughs) A preemptive mooning, of course. A classic. (laughs) That's a- <laughs> what the fuck, Donnie? That's sometimes why I moon people out of my window. So show them like, oh my God, a crazy person lives there. Never fuck with that person in that apartment. So your apartment is known as the moons over my hammy house. <laughs> yeah. I really want it to be known as that. A fellow gay just moved into my building. After I've been here for nine years, an attractive gay has moved in with the drunk upstairs. Wait, he moves in with the drunk? Yeah, the drunk always brings in a new roommate. I think he sublets, and usually it's someone that's just as bad news as he is. But now there's like a 20-something gay boy running around in my apartment building. He doesn't know better. He's probably fresh off the plane at LAX with dreams and a cardigan, Mm. and he's moving in with that crazy guy upstairs. Yeah. Maybe I'll tell him, like, if you need a couch to hang on, we can watch Cruel Intentions. If you need a window to stick your ass out of, I know a place. <laughs> Everything that you have said in the last two minutes is just unhinged. I will never understand the preemptive mooning to get ahead of the potential shooting but you know god bless if it makes you feel safe fine when i first moved to new york my grandfather was afraid that i'm so suburban and sheltered that i wasn't cut to survive in a big city so he told me when i'm on the train i should bark so that crazy people think i'm crazier than they are so i think it's the same thinking i just stick my butt cheeks on the window (laughs) okay if you were to bark would you do like an x gun give it to you like a or would you do like a oh no for sure like that yeah nice (laughs) okay so back to a couple more things about what's in this bag this is where we really start to get into the land of being pretentious she has (laughs) two journals One that she's finished, that she's like, ooh, she's been beat up. Look at this. And she, like, documents that she has filled this one journal, which I'm like, if I were a famous person, do you know where my journal would not be? In a bag. It would be in a safe behind, like, a guard and a thing that I had to put my fingerprint on. Like, what is in Bella Hadid's journal? Well, now I want to mug her just to get that. I'll keep everything up. And then a new journal. And she's like, this one's fresh. Can't see what's in here. This Mm. is the other thing. I don't keep a journal. I have my notes app, which I guess is comparable to her just having this journal willy nilly in this bag. But (laughs) I'm not concerned with anyone seeing my innermost thoughts. Number one, because I share them out loud every week, twice a week on this podcast, sometimes three times a week. But number two, if you can decipher what is in my notes app, you deserve (laughs) to know. Just for sport, I pulled up my most recent note because also, in a surprise to no one, my organization, it's not like I have different notes for different topics. Uh I open a note and it is a free writing exercise. I am just writing about different topics as they come to me. So this note that I'm about to read you, it starts out definitely about Summer House and then I don't know what the fuck this second part is. So it says, Danielle has woo girl energy. Nothing less attractive than men talking about sports they used to play. Is Sierra Brittany-ing? Did she always have a draw like this or is it new? And then swiftly we transition to (laughs) living in an AI game. One ages, one old woman, because never leaves the game, slash resets. On days she remembers, old woman finds her to plant the seed. I have... No fucking clue. Did you want to write a book? 
I'm thinking it was a dream because I do sometimes wake up and I'll frantically text out my dream, but mm. I truly could not tell you what the fuck that was. Huh. <laughs> My most recent note, and I don't know what this is from, says possible guests for the podcast. And then that is blank. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I have no ideas. And then at the bottom, like I skipped lines so I could put guests. Uh-huh. But then at the bottom, it says babies should be off limits. Why? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Two last things that just really sum up this experience of watching this five minute video. She had a sleeve of green apple Mentos, which then she was like, "Mm, why not? And like pops one in her mouth. And I'm like, what are you trying to prove here, Bella? And then last but not least, this is what really confirmed that this whole exercise is bullshit. She had a lighter, which she's like, just in case, no cigarettes. Bitch, you're Bella Hadid. We've seen you smoke it. Yeah. So anyway, I spent five minutes of my life watching that and 20 minutes talking about it. So <laughs> I'm part of the problem. So who's the real winner here? Nobody. We've yeah. all lost. Mm-hmm. I feel like a bloody underwear <laughs> set. Do you ever feel like bloody underwear <laughs> in the back of Bella's car? That would be a better song. Anyway. Cutie of the week. Let's do it. Okay, great. Mine's going to be short and sweet. My cuties of the week are Katie and Ariana from Vanderpump Rules because Hmm. although their show has been put on pause, they announced on Watch What Happens Live this week that they are finally opening that sandwich shop, which I truly never thought I'd see the day. So congratulations, gals. My cutie of the week is Darren Chris because although he loves vagina, he is culturally queer, he said. Huh. (laughs) He said he was raised in San Francisco, so there were a lot of gay men around him. He watched a lot of men die of AIDS, and a lot of his biggest roles were gay men. So culturally queer. Sure. (laughs) We need to add that to our flag. Babies are off limits. Why? Culturally queer? How come? (laughs) I need to find out about those babies. (laughs) <laughs> Please like and subscribe if you have not already. And on Monday, we will be covering Ella Enchanted. So tune in for that. I was miserable. <laughs> okay, well, we haven't recorded that episode yet, so fuck. Fuck me. <laughs> Someone already told me they were going to skip that episode. They were like, Chelsea's going to drag you through the mud. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Over Ella Enchanted? <laughs> that's, that's what they are ready for. Also, if they're skipping episodes that I'm dragging you through the mud, what <laughs> episodes are they listening to? I love the idea that my persona at this point is such a bitch that I'm going to need to ride hard for Ella Enchanted <laughs> featuring Anne Hathaway. Stay tuned, cuties. And we will talk to you later. Love you like a sister. <gasps> Fuck me. No. I recorded this on the cloud. That's okay. You can download it. Okay. Let's see if I know where the cloud is. (laughs) 